Welcome to the Flight of the Round Table Podcast. Broadcasting from the Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina. And now, here are your hosts, Dan, Drew, Daniel, and Florian. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is episode 39 of the Flights of the Round Table podcast. It feels damn good to be here. We are actually at Vaulted Oak Brewery off the corner of Monroe Road in the greater Charlotte area. Yeah, welcome in everybody for all the people continuing to listen. We appreciate that support for all our newcomers. Tell you what we're about real quick. We drink flights of beer, talk about football. We talk about a bunch of random shit. Uh, We laugh, laugh with us, try to, you know, sometimes it's a little more stupid than funny, but same kind of thing. Um, And if you haven't yet, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and um, what's that last one? TikTok, right? (laughs) So at F-O-T-R-T podcast. So can't forget that. Yeah, show uh, love on the TikTok. Yeah, Yeah, and we're we're almost at 40, boys. We are almost at episode 40. Wow. That's a nice ring to it. That's absolutely incredible to me. And, folks, we have a wonderful guest here at Vaulted Oak that we're going to get to. But, guys, I'm going to be a little somber here. A little bit of a sad day. Uh, just, I want everybody to bow their heads. Okay. The Someone Eagles died. traded Jalen Rager today, <laughs> and I am <laughs> just broken up. About I'm it. not going to bow my head he, for him. Yeah. He contributed so much to the Eagles, and I just, you know, I, I hate seeing him go. And uh, no, nah, fuck that. That guy was such a bust of a first round pick. <laughs> okay. I mean, whenever it happened, it was just so depressing because Justin Jefferson was sitting there. Good riddance. Hope you have success, but just horrendous use of assets. You weren't kidding when you said you were going to offer a eulogy for that guy. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> yeah, but I knew that was a sham. Yeah, hey, you just graveyarded him. You know, honestly, yeah. I feel like every time you saw Jalen Rager on the field, you just you think what could have been with Justin Jefferson. Right, that, it's like no it's shit. like a shoulda, coulda, woulda. Yeah, mm. um, Dan, I'm sorry about your loss, but not really. It's and, a uh, shame. I, no I'm glad you'll sleep that. happy night tonight. And for people that don't know, Dan is an ordained minister. So, oh, yeah. Wow, okay. wow. So yeah. I I can definitely uh, coordinate a uh, eulogy. So well, why don't you introduce our guest, Dan? Guys, we have for the first time. Hear that again. First time we actually have an owner. Of a brewery. What? We have yeah. Kyle, the owner of Vaulted Oak Brewery here in the greater Carolinas. Kyle, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing all right. It's just another day to me, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. How are y'all doing? Oh, we're, we're, living, the, we're, we're, we're living the dream. So we, we've Excited had like salespeople, marketing people, GMs, we've brewers. Yeah. We've had it all, but we've never had a co-owner. Yeah, I've heard. So, yeah, know. I was going to say, let's, let, a co-owner. I got to give a shout out yeah. to my other <laughs> yeah. guys, David, Carrie, our head brewer, uh, Johnny Jones, mm-hmm. and Chuck Kessler. Um, there's four of us. They're the main active owners. Hell but, yeah. you know, but you I, do the most work, don't you? I Be tend honest. to do the <laughs> most work that nobody else wants to do. Okay. So, yeah. Well, and you were telling us off air before we started about the crazy 45 minutes. You know, you don't have to share, um, <laughs> but if you'd like. I mean. This guy went through a ringer in 45 minutes. I think he completed like five tasks. That yeah. was something insane. And yeah. chugged a, a hazy IPA. Right yeah. Before we got <laughs> so yeah. Make, make it six. Not six. a lager, yeah. not a sour, no. but an IPA. Yeah. Yeah. That's 7.2%. That's yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. It, let, we'll, we'll just say it was a parental duties, and you, you you did it like a champ. I didn't think I could do it, boys. But Forty-five minutes, yeah. Kyle. You, you did you did a great job with that. You did a great job with this brewery, the ambiance, and everything about it is great. So, talk to us about what you do specifically with the brewery. Yeah, um, <clears throat> like I kind of joked, I I kind of do what everyone doesn't want to do, but you know, my day starts you know with either delivering kegs or running payroll or cleaning bathrooms uh building furniture it it it, it really varies you know every day and i think you know when you talk to a lot of different owners uh of breweries or i mean really of any business you know um that that's kind of usually what they'll tell you they do um there's not really one specific job that you know that that i do or or we do and just kind of all-encompassing 
stuff. So, so you said building fin- furniture. I just moved into a new house, and uh, I got some things that need built. So uh, you yeah. looking for a side gig? Uh, yeah. I, I, I was trying to mow one of my <laughs> friend's grass as a side gig. I just lost that. So. Oh, wow. Did you mow it backwards or something? <laughs> no. Some other company came in and undercut me by half. So, oh. You know. <laughs> got that stolen. Emotional. Man. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. But like I said, yeah, if you want me to build some Ikea furniture for you. Okay. I'd, yeah, those uh, instructions are trickier set. than you might think. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. Those things will take you through the ringer. Yeah, <laughs> like, they really will. It's a maze. Like, I, definitely set aside a whole, like, day. Uh-huh. I, Ikea, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If it's anything from Ikea, just, yeah. yeah. And it Five will break. Hours. It will break in about three months, too. <laughs> oh, of <yeah>. course. <laughs> the, the price is there. Great price. We're not going to argue yeah. about that, but you get what you pay for. Yeah. There's yeah. two changing yeah. tables in the bathrooms that came from Ikea. I put together, yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow, very Taking nice. about a whole half day. You're going to have your baby <laughs> sitting on there. You're going to be like, oh, I'm going to go get some diapers. And when you come back, like the baby's going to be on the floor, broken thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's Ikea. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. And, and speaking of Lawsuit. Ikea, I'm going to go on a little, quick little tangent here, right? But I was telling the guys uh, last week, I was like, you know, um, if I ever get to a point where I'm doing financially very, very well, right? And I could afford this. I think Ikea has a, because of the facility that they have, they should have a thing where they have like an end of your clearance sale or like a or not a sale, but a thing where all the items that they like just they couldn't sell throughout the year that they're either going to trash or put on clearance. Right. It's mostly mattresses, furniture, something <laughs> soft. Right. Yeah, yeah. And they have that like racetrack of a floor yeah. in their <laughs> store. They should you should be able to buy out Ikea. Right. Yeah. And like fulfill like it's my dream. Fulfill out my dream of go kart racing in Ikea. Oh, yeah. And oh. having yeah. mattresses as like bears. Dude, that would be the sickest thing ever. And I think from a business perspective, you could charge. Oh I'll yeah, be ass you could get that. sponsors. You could, you know, yeah. get your man to, you know, video it. And I, I, yeah, I, I think that'd be the coolest thing yeah. ever. That's what, a, that's my dream. I'm it's not like real life Mario I, Kart. I, yeah, that's I don't exactly know what same thing into, but fucking whichever one IKEA make it happen. Yeah, let's make this happen. <laughs> Which yeah. one? Is? <laughs> it is that one. Yeah, make it happen. Let's make this make happen. happen. So <laughs> that's that's definitely unique. And another thing that's unique about this brewery is I want you to talk about it because there's people who are going to be tuning into this podcast that don't know what this brewery used to be. Yes. So this building used to be an old BB&T uh, branch bank. And oh. during the merger, well, the truest merger or whatever it was, um, there's like a, another BB&T like a mile and a half down the road. This one was the one that got the axe. It's kind of funny. Um, you know, in, before this, I was a bartender and this was actually my bank that I would come and, you know, oh, deposit shit. all my cash and that shit like hilarious. that. And so, Small world. Yeah, right? So it was kind of funny, like, during demo and build-outs, like, oh, that's, like, where I would sign a deposit slip. And, like, that, that was the register that would go behind all the bulletproof glass. Well, and, like, was it know? just coincidence, or did you have a say when you guys were, like, finding a location? Like, guys, look, I deposited a few checks yeah. here. Let's make this the brewery. So, honestly, we kind of stumbled not stumbled but came across the location we already kind of had a concept a brewery concept um that we kind of had to kind of tweak a a few things to to kind of match up with the you know the the theme and and the brand itself um but yeah i mean we kind of like i said kind of fell into it uh rolled with it Mm -hmm. and you know it it was kind of in the beginning we were a little cautious about going full on bank theme and i yeah. still to this day don't really like saying the word theme yeah necessarily yeah. um and you know if you go back on my uh, the axios article about us you know getting oh, coming up it's the like the axios article the yeah. comments on that like you know any brewery opening up in charlotte's going to get some good comments yeah. but our comments of being a brewery in charlotte opening in an old bank oh yeah. Holy shit. Wow. I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> I remember like one guy was like, you know, some guy your some guy's homebrew is you know, wouldn't be better with crack cocaine or something like that. And then and it's like, what in the hell yeah, is going on? Are you, you talking, talking, about? talking about completely? Yeah, out. exactly. It's like you don't even like one, you'll probably never step foot in here, but and that's fine with me. But yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah we, don't, <laughs> good we don't do cocaine here. Exactly. Yeah. We do not do cocaine here. So <laughs> But we do well, it on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> After nine. Depending, <laughs> depending who's playing and well, there's bye week. But yeah. yeah, you know, so like I said, you know, circling back, this used to be an old BB&T bank where we're sitting at right now uh, is actually the old drive through. Honestly, couldn't tell. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and that's kind of like circling back to the, you know, what I was saying about not going full theme, but, you know, having subtle little 
hints or nuances here and there. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you walk in, you eventually see the uh, the vault door. Yep. Uh, like I said, this is the old drive through. See the pneumatic tube no system and stuff like that. We'll yeah. send Florian, candy. I mean, how... and... Florian, <laughs> what? do you just not have any sort of situational awareness? I guess not, no. I did not think, <laughs> I did not think this is where we were. Wow. <laughs> no, but, like, I'm visualizing it now. I could see me pulling around that corner here. <laughs> the little, yeah. the, Florian, you know, there's whatever. literally yeah. one right there. Florian, can we try to send you through one of these bank oh, tubes? Oh, shit. Wow. <laughs> can we, right can we send you through there? Yeah, we yeah. might need to because <laughs> yeah, you might need forgotten to, uh, his whole brain. <laughs> yeah, all yeah. Wow, I did not see that. No, Honestly, it, yeah. I walked through here, didn't see it at all. Yeah. Yeah, it's well, super. It's super, good camouflage. super nice. I think the inside is, is cozy and you got a lot of greenery, right? That's yeah. unique about yeah. some breweries that we've seen. And, uh, you know, the beer is really good, too. So that helps. Great. You that know helps. what else is good, guys, is Alfredo sauce. I mean, yeah. I feel like everyone likes Alfredo sauce at the table, right? Yeah. You like Alfredo sauce? Oh, I you love know. Alfredo sauce. You know, okay. so my wife does not like Alfredo sauce. I don't get to eat it as often. What? Yeah, I know. Is she, is she uh, dairy intolerant? Is that why? She's not. Oh. She just... I don't know. She like, she loves tomatoes. Or That's something. depressing. <laughs> Anti Alfredo. <laughs> Anti Alfredo. So when you like, you probably sneak out in the middle of the night. You get your, like, go to right? Olive Garden. Like, yeah, I'm just going out, <laughs> eat in the car, <laughs> like knocking on Olive Garden's door. Like, <laughs> Honey, I'm you. going to Concord Mills. I'll see you, you know, <laughs> tomorrow. You're like, we closed five minutes ago. Please open <laughs> back up. <laughs> open up. I know you have some in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I say that because today in Memphis on I-85, um, there was a tanker carrying like 50,000 gallons of Alfredo. <laughs> and, and it crashed and there was like a mild stretch of this pure whiteness alfredo. just alfredo like i mean someone say something could, about could this. you imagine i would start licking the floor skin, skin. a little bit maybe of course you would <laughs> yeah no uh, of course you would yeah it for depends. everyone that's listening he would do it he would. <laughs> probably would just taste to make sure it's could good. you imagine though like like you're driving and and you know they have like the cones and they're having people merge and you think okay like maybe there's an accident. All of a sudden, you start seeing this white, thick Alfredo sauce Running just going it. all the way down the <laughs> highway. And you, you go, you open up your window. <laughs> oh, okay. hey, mumbo, Italian. <laughs> See, I can't. I, I'm envisioning. The first thing I'm thinking of is the sound of like driving through a very saucy oh. road. <laughs> very it's like, saucy. like, is that no. like a familiar? I would sound? roll my windows down. I'd have my windows down the whole time. Oh yeah, I, I mean, I sure would. But I'm yeah. Just, Mac now, would you slip? Was your car slipping that? It depends. Yeah, that's true. Depends if you afford How drive. slippery will it be? That yeah. little icon on your dash, yeah. right, <laughs> yeah. when you're hydroplaning is just going crazy. Yeah, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely putting it in four low. Yeah. So, <laughs> can you imagine getting a flat in that zone? It's like, <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> so, so, Anybody so, have any noodles? Just a flopper, <laughs> right? And it's just like shooting Alfredo because it's super <laughs> flat, right? <laughs> Like Inst everywhere. Instead <laughs> of four wheel drive, should you have Alfredo wheel drive to where uh, yeah. you can actually drive through sauces? Just in oh. case. If it becomes, a, if it starts becoming like an epidemic where it's just truckloads <laughs> of Alfredo sauce are spilling on highways, I bet you Ford will listen. <laughs> <An> epidemic. <laughs> Dude, if that's an epidemic, we're gonna get like Italians flocking to here. Just <laughs> bowls of pasta running to the yeah, highway there, station. <laughs> I think there's probably the one guy in every city, right, that just eats pasta and like uh, for his lunch, right? He goes to his office and he has <laughs> pasta for lunch. And the one day he does not bring sauce with him, <laughs> that happens. He's like, fucking gold mine, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, wouldn't, uh, Florian, wouldn't it get his pasta dirty, though? Um, Dan, you're, you're thinking too yeah, far Yeah, you're ahead. thinking too much. Yeah. I, I think if he carries pasta in a bag to lunch with no sauce, he doesn't matter if it's dirty. Call him the pasta man. Okay. He's, well, an, he's an impasta. That was, definitely, <laughs> that was definitely an accident. Kyle, I want to kind of get your opinion on this. Yeah. Do you think beer was created on accident? Mm, that's a good. That's a philosophical. That's, a good, that's an existential. Yeah. Not, not existential, but it a philosophical. An exorcism. It, I think at some point, yeah. I mean, you know, it depends on how sciencey you get into it. But I think at some point, fermentation happened by accident, and mm -hmm. some person, you know, ten thousand years ago or however long it was. I'm sure that someone mm -hmm. keeps track with this. You know, drank a puddle of what they thought was, you know, rainwater and. And it's like, oh, they got, they got drunk. <laughs> up. And I went and told their friends, like, come drink from this puddle. I mean, <laughs> that first person literally had the lowest tolerance of yeah, ever. Exactly. You know? yeah. ever. Probably died, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Immediate cirrhosis. <laughs> yeah. Like, just yeah. dumb. So many horse carriages right. went through that hole. 
Instead of the fountain of youth, it's the fountain of beer. Yes. The fountain of yeast. Yes. Of I'd, like, I'd like to yeah. think that was accidental too, right? And I think but so. But then too. they just went with it. But then, yeah, and then over time, like, like oh, I can, like, how do we do this again? How can we make this again? And then, how can we up. make <laughs> money <laughs> off it's of like, it? Like it's that, like, huh? we know Richard died, but you know yeah. what? <laughs> we're going to try to get to the point before he died. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a balance, you know? Yeah. I almost think it's like the time of like where Jesus turned water into wine, right? And they were making bread in the back using water to cure the yeast. East, right, and I turn it to wine, and all of a sudden, you, you know, said, right? Yeah. Like, we know this. To be, I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Is yeah. that what they did? <laughs> You're like, right, guys? Yeah, fuck yeah. I'm, yes. just, <laughs> I'm testing you. I'm just agreeing with everything, you Catholic school yeah. boy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, in the name of the mother. And the mother I'm going to today. I mean, shit, I went to Catholic school from like K through 12, but I don't really remember too much either. So. Yeah, it's well, Drew remembers uh, everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we got, the, we got the three Catholics. I keep a journal. I did not go to Catholic school. Well, you right. didn't, but you. Grew I up went Catholic. to so mad. You. At this point, you might as well have. I know, I but went I, went to, with I went to. I went to. I went to mass with you one time. <laughs> Who's yeah. the ordained minister here? Well, <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah. 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 That's true. Really. Please forgive me, Father. Now, <laughs> now we have these beautiful beers here, and you said you chugged a hazy before that, which has yes. all those citrus fruits. You know, we're coming up where you know you're going to have Oktoberfest. There's going to be stout, so it's going to be kind of that that dark stuff yeah what do you personally think is the next like big ingredient to go into beer what's what's on the come up at least in vaulted oak size well let's see um i think that it's not necessarily like the next big thing i think that things kind of cycle through sure so and and you've all four of you have probably heard before in either previous episodes or talking to other people, you know, lagers, pilsners are oh, yeah. like the hot thing right now. And, and for good reason. Um, I think that, you know, simplicity and like just getting back to like beer flavored beer sure. is kind of <laughs> going to be like the like next that. big thing, I think, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. um, you know, I, I remember listening to some of your different, uh, you know, some of the other podcasts or some of your other episodes and, you know, talking about fads versus, you know, trends yeah, and, uh-huh. or trends and, you know, what's here to stay. And, you know, they're, you know, I think will beer, uh, will people always add lactose to beer? Yes. I'm, I think that's here to stay. <laughs> yep. um, but at the same time, a good West Coast IPA will also Hits. always be, be here to stay. So, yeah. Okay. So, so you think it's just a rotational thing instead I, of like you can't really introduce something too new nowadays. I mean, it, it, it it's getting harder and harder for sure. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you, you talk about like brute IPAs or cold IPAs, and I mean, I know I'm saying a lot of stuff about like IPAs, but um, hey, there is nothing. Well, there, and, and, yeah, exactly. About there's because that's what's that. been, been trending for a while. Everyone lo- like it's just IPAs, right? And yeah, that's IPAs like one of the most creative cool. beers. Like everyone does a creative IPA. Like they always add something else, but to an IPA. Yeah, I mean, yeah. hell, y'all have that sour IPA. That's yeah, pretty, that's I've never unique. had a sour yeah. IPA. Really, and that was insane. That was a very good beer. Yeah, uh, yeah I want to shout that beer out. That's a fantastic. That was yeah. uh, what was it called? It's called Rules of Acquisition. Rules of Acquisition. That, that, that was all of our. Uh, that was wow. all from our, our head brewer. He and he is a more of a sour guy wild fermentation kind of dude um he actually so he has a microbiology degree from clemson um wow. he's like a straight up scientist that just really likes beer <laughs> so there, there, there could definitely be well, more lucky. unique things coming out of that brewery yeah for sure um yeah. you know if we had the space we'd have you know six seven eight barrels already wow. filled up with you know you know spirit barrels filled with different things but for sure you know and, and you know we're only a little over a year old too mm-hmm. um so, so are we. Trying. This is the perfect match. Yeah. You know? yeah. okay. Look at us. Dude, I'm not going to lie. I, th- I couldn't think of a better way to apply that guy's degree than to beer. Yeah. <laughs> Microbiology <laughs> and beer. I'm not going to lie. You can't apply that any better. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. What are you going to do? Would, test acetone? Yeah. Dude, that, <laughs> that beer is insane. It's so good. It's like That's like a great beer. I don't know if this is what he was going for, but like if you're not in IPAs, but it's been like months, right? And you're like, ah, I want to try it again, right? I, I couldn't think of a better one to get into IPAs. And yeah, that. and I mean, depending on who, you know, the particular person is, you know, we, we can kind of pitch it towards, you know, it being more of a sour or being more yeah. towards an IPA. Yeah. You know, it, it 
It definitely crosses. You do yeah, have a little it's hoppy right aftertaste, but it's not like super strong to the point where people get turned off by it. You it's know, because yeah. if you don't, if you're not digging, um, fucking, you know, hoppy like aftertaste, super bitter, yeah, yeah super, super bitter, bitter, super hoppy, yeah. then you're you're not going to be an IPA person. But if it's been a while, right, and like we all have those moments where like I haven't eaten something or I haven't drank something in a while, and I kind of want to get into it, right? For me, the other day we had a bourbon tasting. I, I oh, yeah. the last time I had bourbon before that was years ago, and I threw <laughs> up. I mean, I didn't <laughs> like it. And uh, I had bourbon, and it was phenomenal, right? So like, yeah. it's, we all have those points in our mm-hmm. life. That's a perfect beer. Yeah, like, yeah. right yeah, in man. there. I, I think you know some consensus of the round table here that we can agree on. It's like it, it's not even quality. It is quality f- to a degree, but. Having a signature unique beer, right? Something you can only mm-hmm. find in other places yeah. wh- is what separates, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, like, you guys have a really good one with that that there. So I like that, yeah. you yeah. know. Finding, really, finding you something, to. you have to. You, you have do. to these days, yeah. for sure. Yep. Um, but, yeah, speaking of that, you know, we like to talk about football yeah. a lot, too. And uh, everybody, we're here at Vaulted Oak Brewing here in Charlotte, North Carolina, off Monroe Street. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about the Panthers real quick. You're a Panthers let's fan, right? Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. So what do, what do you think about Baker? Do you think he's the guy guy for the job? I think he is 100% the uh, the the uh, the guy for the job this okay. year. This oh, year. That's, that's, that's a caveat. great answer. You like great him more answer. than Sam Darnold? Yes, 100%. Oh, I hope so. If I think Sam, so. I think Daniel's like, and, that's an easy And I will answer. say this. I will say if Sam Darnold's contract didn't have that one in front of it, he'd be I, moved. I would yeah, and I would and he would be moved. I also think he's not bad of a backup. But for eighteen million or however much it, no, not a chance. Not even eight million, to be honest with you. He could so. fill in for like a two-week stretch where Baker's hurt. He yeah. could fill in, and it would be all right. You could go one and one, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I th- I think as a Panthers fan, like we tend to look at everything with a grain of salt, mm-hmm. and so you know, like you're saying, like we, you know, is Sam Darnold going to be the best backup? Probably not, but it could be worse, right? So. Yeah, that's well, why you have him. You have him exactly. weather the storm whenever your starter is out for a few weeks. Exactly. But it looks like now he's not even going to be the back. Didn't he get hurt? I don't. Yeah, in he's the out preseason. For yeah. Four so to five I saw that. Or so. They might even put him on IR. I yeah, think, so. and that's a tough roster spot decision because now you have to bring a third quarterback on your roster. Who Do they only well, have two at camp? I, I mean, I know, thought I they think did. PJ Walker. Yep. I, 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 still. Okay. Yeah, I think he's still there. I think he's just kind of floating out there. Yeah. Yeah. He's still on the roster. I mean, now I think he's your legitimate. You know, back up now. So uh, that's good for him because he he could have been cut just any day now. <laughs> yeah. He really could have. Yeah, those fifty-three man roster cuts happened. And yeah, uh, I was gonna say I've been so busy I haven't really been able to keep oh, track of the final roster. But more than a barber on a <laughs> Saturday <laughs> on a Saturday. More than, yeah. s- more than scissors <laughs> and a kindergarten art craft project. Yep, <laughs> that's a lot of cutting. That's yeah. a lot of cutting. Yeah, man, the glue and that. Yeah, so so Baker, I think everyone can agree that Baker is definitely an upgrade, right? Yes. And I think the question is how much of an upgrade. Yes. Right? So the other day on a podcast or a show, Baker Mayfield was asked, how do you feel about playing the Browns week one? And he goes, <laughs> he literally said, I'm going to fuck them up. I'll, I'm that not going to lie. Sexy. As I, I think I've been the resident shit talker of Baker. I'm not going to lie okay. on this okay. podcast. And I wear it proudly, honestly, because I think he's kind of a douche. <laughs> but I, but I do, I really do like that answer from him. I really do. I mean, because it, because it's his old team, and they did disrespect him a little bit, especially like, sure, you need you like if Deshaun Watson didn't have what he had going on and with his personal life, right? And he, like, as a quarterback, you got to understand he is a spe- Deshaun is a special talent. To lose your job to that guy, sure it sucks, right? But you can logically understand what's yes. happening if you right. have self awareness. But the fact that Cleveland is such a backwards organization and um, everything that's going on with that, how they treated yeah. Baker, I love that answer from him. I'm not going. I would say yeah. the exact same yeah. thing. I'm going to the, fuck them up. What do you, What do you think, Kyle? I, I, I mean, think you think that's out of out of the realm to say. No, uh, and I think that you know. I, th- I think that you know, as a Panther, the Panthers organization has been looking for that kind of attitude. Yeah, yeah. You know, so since a certain number one, uh-huh. you know, <laughs> was in his you know prime. Prime, yeah. And um, you know, the Panthers have always had you know, been the butt of the joke of being you know the wine and cheese crowd anyway. So bringing in some sort of kind of life back into that stadium, back into the team, back into the fan base. Yeah. You know, I'm all for it. I like that. I like that. The only – so I I love shit talking. 
you know, it's good to hear that he's gassed up and everything. Yeah. But you just, the only thing you wonder with him, is he going to try to do too much in that game? I don't think he has. He has no choice to do as much as he can. But 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 still, you you want him to play well, and but you don't want him to get compl- hurt. Will also get hurt, but also not. Yeah, try to take the game over try himself. To, try to yeah. say, let me put the team on my back. Christian McCaffrey, you're not here. This is my. I game. don't know. I kind of agree with Daniel. I think, I think he, he has should. to have that mentality. Yeah, I think he because should. this this game kind of def- defines it's the momentum for the season. If Baker yeah. comes out, has a good game, and they win that game, doesn't matter about how much. If they win the game, yeah, dude, Panthers have a legit shot to make the playoffs. It's, yeah, it's and the, the pan- first game of the season, dude. Yeah, as a Panthers like, fan, it's the momentum. as a Panthers fan, we want that. Yeah. We want that. We want him to go all out. We want it to be amazing, and we want him to win. And I think and the rest what, of the team needs to get behind that. Yeah. And I think that yeah. if the rest of the team, especially on the offense and, and defense, honestly, you know, if they're behind that, you know, mentality, and they all go out and do that, and they're like, we want to win this for Baker. We want to, you know, sure show up. You know, I think that just is going to, you know, multiply. You know. Throughout the season, and uh, I agree. And, yeah, I mean, and he won't necessarily have to have that hero mentality. Like, sure, he will. He'll have that in his head, but he'll also be well protected. And you know, Robbie Anderson will actually catch passes, and you know, DJ Moore, <laughs> will, you know, yeah, we'll stuff. see. <laughs> will McCaffrey pre- play all 17 games this year? I'm worried about our receivers. <sighs> I'm worried about our no receivers. Comment, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's a very good political <laughs> answer. <laughs> no comment. Dan, bless him. No bless yeah, McCaffrey. I, I, I'm gonna bless Please. you. I, Please. Please. Now, Please. Kyle, I want to keep on the football topic here. Let's do it. But yeah. I want to throw it to something else about the brewery. What would you say makes Vaulted Oak unique and also connects them to the Charlotte community? Ooh, man, you are throwing out heaters. heavy hitters. Yeah, yeah. I love yeah. it. Heavy I'm like love a pitcher it. throwing <laughs> fastballs. Yeah. And he's Albert Pujols. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we like a little emotional angle into this podcast. I love it. Oh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, you know Back get a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, our location for sure is pretty unique in that you know we have a wide array demographically of neighborhoods you know okay. so you know half a mile away you have Cotswold million dollar homes yep um, same thing down you know closer uh, heading into uptown with Elizabeth and you know Chantilly Plaza Midwood mm-hmm. yep, yep then you have the neighborhood where I live in Oakhurst uh, we're in Echo Hills technically um, mm-hmm. you know great younger family uh, you know you know, and, and as far as demographics go, there you have Greer Heights right sure. down the street here sure. as well. Um, so, you know, when we when we were opening and planning, we kind of looked at that and said, you know, that we need to kind of ride upon that um, and really focus in on the community aspect. Mm-hmm. You know, of you know what really, I, I, you know, we're not the first ones to do it by any means, but, no, you know, no. every brewery is always, you know, going to say, you know, the community is what matters, and it really is. Mm-hmm. Um, making that one of our pillars, I think, is kind of help us stand out. Definitely. Um, sometimes for good, some or hopefully most times for good, sometimes, you know, there's too many children here, you know, running <laughs> around, but, <laughs> you know, we're, you know, we cater to a lot of folks, and, you know, you know parents on the weekends, want a place that you know they can bring their children and play with you know 10 million rocks out in the back you know <laughs> and with you know with our cups did you count all 10 million of those all rocks? 10 million wow yeah you could win a jelly bean contest i, I could i have i have yeah, third <laughs> yeah. grade and i ate all those fucking Hell jelly yeah. that's how we got the rock counting job <laughs> exactly, <laughs> right again owner of you know of a small business you do yeah. it all so hell yeah um but yeah you know getting back to it, I, I really think community is what i won't say set us sets us apart sure. but like with our location here and you know how we kind of you know reach out to our customer base you know we always kind of put a community mindset first that's that's awesome honestly and, and i like that aspect of it you know, when you say you're doing it for the community, it's it's for this neck of the woods, right? Yeah, you're giving right. Th- these people an easy access to delicious beer. And when I mean delicious, this stuff's good. This it's is good beer. Good. This so, is good yeah. beer. So, I mean, I know you guys are new and young, but this is good beer. 
This Thank is you. good beer. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't touch it. That's like I said. That's why <laughs> it's good. <'cause> I, <laughs> there's not too many breweries <laughs> yet around this part, right? Isn't if, what, what's uh, what's? Isn't there another big one? Yeah. So what, shout out to Edge City. They're a little Edge further City. down Monroe Road, and then kind of heading towards uh-huh. the like uh, Rama Road area, like uh, East um, East Mac High School, uh-huh. and then heading closer into Uptown Devil's Logic. You know? Yeah. Yo, right. Um, yes. So we're, exactly. That's we're kind of like that middle. So th- I think you place. guys could mimic, like, because I- I'll say, like, in terms of uh, brewery density, right, you have South mm. Boulevard and, like, South End area, yeah. right? It's super dense super in breweries. Sure. And I think y- this this stretch, this the eastern side of Charlotte, yeah. right, can mimic that. Like, I-, I don't know what lots are available and what uh, properties are available to build breweries, but I definitely think the potential is there because this brewery, you mentioned Devil's Logic. We did a show there. Them mm-hmm. too, and I know there's another one. I think further down that way, and I'm not sure what their name is. I forget their name. But me and Dan, uh, we've gotten beers there before. I remember it was a while back. Dan's like what? But um, <laughs> like this. Too many beers. It, I feel like this has a potential. Like this, this area of Charlotte to blo- like kind of blow up. Yeah, you know, it's breweries set up shop. Yeah, yeah. It, it's always obviously a touchy subject, especially when. You put the hot word brewery in, yeah. in the conversation. Um, one thing that I always kind of liked about here and kind of talking about all the surrounding neighborhoods is, you know, those neighborhoods themselves are already kind of established. Yeah. Um, and, and not to say that, you know, any developer or anyone can, can't do whatever they want, you know. And, and I know, it, you know, it's coming. Um, actually, right down the, at the corner of uh, Wendover, and Monroe, um, there's an old warehouse building that's kind of getting returned into um, mixed use. No, no residential, I don't think. Uh, but um, Pop the Top, I think, uh, is a bottle shop down in South End. Yeah, uh, they just signed oh, uh, cool. over cool. there. So I mean, nice. and we got Common Market, you know, Oakwall yep. down yeah. the street. Yeah, um, classic. South classic. Pizza, you know, which I think you guys yeah. shot down on a little oh, bit yeah. you know, beforehand. <laughs> um, How do you know? Yeah. <laughs> The but sauce on my shirt, right? Yeah. <laughs> they they actually do have some really good Alfredo yeah, sauce. So. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. I can guarantee it's not on the highway. Right it's now. not on the highway. <laughs> no, it is not. But no, but that that's really that's really good stuff, Kyle. We're yeah. we're about the three fourths mark away here. But there's one thing we gotta always do before we talk about these beers. We're gonna play a game of overrated, underrated, Let's properly it. rated. Love it. Podcast staple, guys. I love it. I do okay. too. What do we yeah, got it's first? It's just a good right. quality game. It's just, just yeah. a great game. Kyle, let's let you go wholesome. first here. Okay. Overrated, underrated, properly rated. Going to sleep in a thunderstorm. Jeez. Oh, That's a weird one. I'm not going to lie. Kyle's like, I don't I have think, time for sleep. It's like, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, no, I mean, I sleep. It doesn't matter. It's like 9 o'clock. Yeah, I fall asleep because I have two kids. But I would say underrated because normally, at least in my. For me, I don't have time to appreciate the serenity and calmness of a nice thunderstorm. Yeah. Normally, there's two children running and screaming <laughs> that you know <laughs> take over that sound, or you know. That that. So, that's I'm gonna fair. say underrated. What about you, Daniel? What are you thinking there? I agree. I think it's underrated. I love it. it. Sounds beautiful to me. I could sleep through that. It's almost like whenever it's in the middle of the winter. And I just always want my window open, no matter what. I don't know why, but I always want my window open. I don't even want it. O- I don't want it open in the, in the summer. Okay. Because I would hell just, no, for sure, for not. sure. Because especially here, it's too hot. <laughs> Only in the winter when it's freezing, freezing. <laughs> Fair enough. I think for me, it's underrated. Uh, love falling asleep in a thunderstorm. I just think it's very, very soothing. I think you guys are all psychopaths. Who falls asleep <laughs> during absolute chaos outside? It's, it's <laughs> yeah. loud as shit. It's kind of bright because of um, the lightning hits, and it's it's just chaos. There's so much rain. I mean, I would say it's um, overrated. I can fall asleep to a thunderstorm just as normal as I could if it was easy, steady conditions. Sure. Uh, Florian, do you need a thunder buddy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, buddy. Going on Did here? you recently watch Ted? <laughs> no, but <laughs> I, I have to say the thunder that we have at our at our new place in our new, in our new town, dude. Yesterday was rough. Yeah, yeah, the that is insane. That, that have, might like just it's a regular rough. thing strike you down, and <laughs> you never yeah, see anything it did. again. It did hit really hard. It yeah. shook the house a little bit. It was crazy. I'm gonna go underrated as well. Um, I, I sleep with white noise, right? I got like a little fan and everything. So when that thunder's on, it's doing its thing. I'm just like. I love it. So good. So. Yeah. 
I love it. Wow. All right, second topic: grilled cheese sandwiches. Mm. And classic. Don't give me any. I was of gonna that. say, do we have? Are we adding like bacon? The crowd works just do it. Butter, Crafts. white bread, American cheese. Okay. Craft singles. That's mm. the best. Is the go-to. It is. Cut. Uh, well, a little caveat: cut and triangles. Triangle. Okay, I was gonna say. <laughs> You're, <laughs> a you know? so, yeah. no, You're a best. monster. No, that's the best. monster. What? You're a what? Mo- You're, You're a, a monster. monster. I like cutting it in half. Dan's oh, a monster. You're a that's monster, crazy, Dan. Dan. That's On a psychotic. grilled cheese? You, you have to Dan. cut triangles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. That's a <laughs> lot, of, that's a lot <laughs> to take in. Yeah. You're kind of like, I was with Dan. <laughs> like He's like, are they about to expel this guy from <laughs> the <laughs> podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get too emotional. Yeah. Usually, but I mean, no, I would say underrated, a good grilled cheese. Let me tell you. So how I make grilled cheeses, you said butter, you know, Bread, yeah. nice Ooh, white bread. I feel like I know what you're about Not, to say. Yeah, are you? Okay. I, I use mayonnaise. Y- yes, yeah. that's the way to go. Put some Dukes on there. Yeah, slap hell yeah. Slap them down. Wait, what? Yep, I don't use butter either. I am a mayonnaise grilled cheese boy. Okay. Yeah, so I you're saying <laughs> but like replace butter. the butter, Instead of butter with mayo. Mayonnaise. Yeah, I've heard of this. And then you cut in triangles. And triangle it, <laughs> yep. We're trying. Thanks, Kyle. Appreciate <laughs> that sorry. one. Triangle, triangle gang. Um, Give me a rating. It's severely underrated. It's one of the best wow. sandwiches ever. It's just so classic. It's this, the finest. Some of the finest things in life are some of the simplest, right? You don't need much. It's just when it hits, it hits. Yeah. Now, I will say I do my own spin on it, and I'll probably get banished into fucking hell <laughs> with Dan. <laughs> um, but I like to prepare them in a waffle iron. And it's okay. very weird, right? But it has the it has the square ridges, right, of, from the waffle iron. I don't know what it does. Do you but get, it, like, crispy square? Yeah, it does make it really uh, fucking good. It really makes it cooking. good. Even yeah, cooking. Yeah, I still cut it into triangles. I'm not a psycho okay. like Dan. <laughs> but but I do cook it. He's a just a psycho with the waffle maker cooking. You cook cheese in a fucking waffle. Yeah. Hey, don't knock it to me. Don't I, ever call I'm a psycho. Yeah, don't call him psycho after you psycho. Whatever. Then that. we're both crazy. <laughs> <laughs> He's a... I don't even know. Can you He's imagine? Mike Myers, I'm Freddy Krueger. It's like 10:30 on a Sunday. Like it's on. Your mom sees it. She's like, "Oh, you're making waffles." Uh, no, <laughs> I'm no. not. No, that's not. Who, who do you think I got it from? I got it from my mother. She oh made, my God. She made a grilled cheese <laughs> in the waffle iron. She's like, "I'm not buying another thing for grilled cheese. You, you'll get one. Yeah. It'll be waffles." <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know grilled cheese. They had a grilled cheese maker. Is that what you're saying to me? No. Well, I don't know. You a GCN? Can, I guess you can. A well, pan? you can get those like panini <laughs> yeah. things, right? A pan. But um, I a pan. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay, Are you saying well, you pan do a pan or pan? Pan. <laughs> we have a pan pan dilemma. <laughs> but uh, I, yeah, she made it in the waffle iron. Wow. Honestly, I think it was fucking amazing. Kyle, did you say that's properly rated or underrated? Grilled cheese. Grilled cheese, yeah. Oh, yeah, underrated. Yeah, underrated, sure. underrated. I'm underrated. also going to go underrated. When we talk about American pastime, baseball, gambling debt, um, apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I'm a th- I think grilled cheese needs to be right there. So. It might need to America. be. Yes. What do you think, Dan? <laughs> I think it's properly rated. Okay. And I'm not, I don't really need to explain. Just properly rated. I think rated. it's underrated. Yeah. I, I, lo- I love a good grilled cheese, especially, like you said, with the mayo. Yeah, yeah especially when you don't have to, like, <coughs> do it yourself. Okay. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> Golden brown, though. Golden brown. I don't like the burn ends like Florian over here. Fuck that. Yeah, this isn't a barbecue shop, you burn in boy. Yeah. All right, so we got <laughs> we got two hydrogens and one oxygen. Makes a little bit of water. Um, the temperature of ice cubes, very, very cold water. Ice cold water. Uh-huh. Overrated, underrated, oh. or properly rated. Florian, do you put this in a waffle maker, too? <laughs> I like it, Dan. <laughs> Fucking I like, You like steam? You like steam? I like that, Dan. You halfway down the middle, bitch. <laughs> um... Um, yeah, it's so underrated. There's nothing more refreshing than ice cold water. So I love ice cold water, especially like if I'm mowing the grass or something like that. But I have incredibly sensitive front teeth. Ah. So if like the thought of eating a popsicle right now is torture. Uh, really? Yeah. Yes. Do you get goosebumps when you when people bite into ice cream? Yes. Or, oh, this yes. my sister is like, who does that. My sister is like that. I yeah. don't know why. I and can I do made, it. Dude, it made me irritated. Chills. So, chills. like, <laughs> Daniel. I can't do it. I'll swish the water around, like, you know, it, you know, yeah. make it warm up a little bit. But sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love the yeah. way you said it. Like, whatever the fuck I got to do. Yeah, yeah, you <laughs> whatever you got to do. But, I mean, I, I'll say up. properly rated. Okay. Um, I'm going to go overrated. I like mine room temperature. That's crazy. It's, you can Deep, drink it faster. So the hands. entire f- 
the group that lives at your house are a bunch of psychopaths. <laughs> I, I, I put mine First, in. First, wow. have grilled cheese boy with a waffle maker, and then room <laughs> temperature water. I mean, what are they putting over there? Yeah, you're right, yeah. Oh, mm. man. <laughs> Listen, I take my water how I like my women. Cold? That's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Wet? Yeah. Wet? Hot. <laughs> okay. Hot. You like to you drink like your water hot? hot? Water? Yeah. Water. Well, what it's good for your body. It's good today? for your body. I have heard this before. It's good for your body. So if I can, okay. if I had to choose, as long as I'm 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 not super super thirsty, then I'm choosing hot water for. Okay, for so here's the thing. You say that, but speaking of small business, he and I we own a pool cleaning service together. Right. Yeah, I do like some cold and water. And I'm not gonna I deny tell you that. what, we've been at pools plenty oh. of times. I've never seen you like. Yo, pass me the scalding hot water. <laughs> You've <laughs> never said it. You've never said it once. Oh, You've where am I going to get? Where once. am I going to get that type of water from? From okay. your car. You let it sit in the car for <laughs> yeah. every single <laughs> day between cool. May and August. Well, here's <laughs> the thing. That. Well, here's the thing about that. I don't like to do that because I'm thinking about cancer. That those those water bottles are that's too right. thin. I'm yeah. just. Those, I don't like that. Yeah, Who's leaching into well, the water? You're thirsty. You don't right have time to think about water. cancer. Okay. I think about it. Okay. Well, I, I like Florian how we gave Dan a new nickname, Halfway Down the Middle Boy. <laughs> halfway Down the Middle Boy. Switzerland over here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. oh, damn. But uh, that does it for Overrated Underrated. That was a good one. That was a good one. I like that. That was a good one. That was actually that was fun. It was one of my favorite ones. That was, definitely, nice. that was definitely a good one. Now, Kyle. Yes. Folks, you can't see it there. But Kyle did pour us some pictures in the back, but we also have these mm. beautiful flights. You wouldn't be able to tell by Florian's flight because, well, shit, it's gone. So, <laughs> Kyle, why don't you walk us through the four beers? Actually, five, guys. He yes. gave us a little extra. Mm. So talk I did to my us. homework. What do we got here? And I will say fifth is my favorite. That yes. Wow. That's right, yeah. Um, well, first off, you have our pitter-patter Pilsner. Um, we honestly get a lot of our names from Letterkenny and Futurama and just random TV shows. So okay. <laughs> I like that. Oh, yeah. Pitter-patter Pilsner, you know, uh, nice, clean Still, you know, it's it's not really like uh, Pilsner Kell or just, you know, sure. th there's still a little bit, like you get a little bit of that maltiness for sure, um, I think at least. We just tapped it today. Um, yeah, I get, I get like a little faint hints of like a Stella or a mm -hmm. Heineken, right? Yeah, yeah, that's very much so, yeah. That, that, I was going to say that too. And Stella. so, you know, obviously, you know, Pilsners, lagers, there's nothing to hide nope. behind. Um, you know, so what you are tasting is the malt, you know, the hops, and the yeast, really. Um, and that's why, you know, they're, they're difficult to do. So, yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Very much enjoying it. Yeah. D delicious. I love it. Yeah, this is our second uh, second batch of it. Okay. Done, so. I like it quite a bit. What, what are we drinking here, this beautiful colored beer right this, here? The second one is called DeLorean Fuel, and that is a pale ale. Saw we, it on the menu. Yeah. So we have uh, one of our uh, other owners uh, has a, you know, attachment to the Michael J. Fox Foundation. Um, so we always try to have a beer that benefits the Michael J. Fox Foundation okay. on our menu. Um, you know, we we can't do it 100% of the time, but you know, we we do definitely strive to do it all the time. So this one, DeLorean fuel, obviously, you know, talking about you know Back to the Future mm -hmm. and the DeLorean, um, just a nice, you know, that's I, a I wouldn't say wet. Yeah, it's ale. crisp. I won't crisp. say West Coast necessarily. No. Um, you know, there's a f we like to play yeah, around with a few close. different hops that. You know, they, they, whether they're experimental, you know, they don't have a name yet. But sure. um, I think this one has uh, H586, um, and it, it, it does definitely lend a, a unique, almost like melon, you know, flavor to it, along with, you know, some of the, like what mosaic would bring to, sure. you know, a beer. Um, yeah, I, I've been drink. That's probably my favorite one that I've been drinking for the past month or so. Um, just like you say, clean, definitely crushable, but you know, I still. Like a little bit of bitterness, you know, when I'm when I'm drinking something. So yeah, very balanced beer. I like this one. Yeah, I see why you crush it. And you don't really see pale ales. No, too you often. You see, don't. You know, you know, IPA yeah, this, it's, IPA that. It's oh, yeah. hazies and West Coast. Yeah, and, yeah. hazy, hazy, yeah. hazy, hazy. Yeah. Um, what you got next? The next one is our hazy. Speaking. Oh, of yeah. <laughs> 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 no wonder you rolled your eyes. You were like, well. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, nah, so this one is uh, me and Hazy McGee 
Um, <laughs> AC McGee. Yeah. Is he Irish? <laughs> <laughs> hey there, Boyle. Uh, <laughs> no, no Irish hops or uh, you know, potatoes or anything like that. <laughs> but uh, no, just uh, like I said, this is one we tapped today. I kind of chose to give you guys, you know, fresher beer. Fresher beer is always going to be best. Um, that is true. And Got this right. is, like I said, we just kicked this up last week and tapped it today. So I thought it was good for uh, for the show, um, but yeah, just yeah. a really nice, uh, juicy, hazy. The you know, when we when we when you tap a hazy IPA, um, you know, fresh out, a lot of times you'll get what's called hot burn, and with this one you do get a little bit of hot burn because it's so fresh. Yeah. So you get a little bit. You know, some people might call it hoppy. Some people might call it bitterness, or like I said, a little hot bit of that burn. burn. Mm-hmm. That's right. And it'll fade here in about. A week, maybe or so, okay. and you'll start to get more of like that juicy, you know, you know tropical fruit notes for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just kind of how hops. That's just like what hops do. You can know, you, can you imagine if you had heartburn? And you're like, let me try this hazy. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. Heartburn. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's got like, <laughs> it's, it's like cure for a little bit, I guess. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So and, and yeah, and, and I, I do find no. I, I can't really think of any examples in the Charlotte market, but there sure. are a lot of hazy IPAs I've had before that are honestly released too soon, and they have okay. you know a little bit of that characteristic. But um, okay. I know that's good. That's, that's, that's actually interesting to look out for, like going yeah. forward. You know, like yeah. I'm gonna pay attention. To that. Can, can I ask you this question though? Yeah. Hotburn is it more of like because I feel like I've tried to had this with sour sometimes. Is it more like a taste like it's not quite done yet does that make sense no so a like lot of times bitterish so bitter well yeah i mean that might be kind of what you're you know everyone's profile taste yeah, profile is yeah, different but that sure. might be kind of what you're looking at i was going to say that a lot of times also with hazy ipas you get something called, it's called hop creep and that's actually that sounds the, horrible exactly oh yeah the it sounds like it's creeping up sugar on it. it is so the sugars within some of the hops because you dose hazy ipas with so much hops oh yeah those, some of those sugars actually help to re-ferment within the already oh, packaged beer. Hopception. Yeah, mm. Hopception. Yeah, yeah, I like that name better than Hop Creek. Yeah. Oh, wow. But, yeah, so you'll actually get this, uh, yeah. this chemical. It's called <laughs> diastol. Okay. And diastol is the same kind of flavor that uh, gives, like, artificial movie butter popcorn. So if you ever taste a hazy IPA, hopefully you don't taste it in ours, but I'm pretty sure you don't. But... If you ever get like a little bit of a like a buttery kind of taste, <laughs> artificial butter taste, ew. it's usually diastole. Yeah, you say ooh, it happens. Okay. I mean, I don't it has happens. Had, Dan's had a lot of those apparently, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I haven't any. I haven't tasted any diastole in my. <laughs> 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 Two at once. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Oh, and then we have the yeah, and then guy. next, yeah, the fourth one. That's our shandy. Uh, That's our current shandy. We call that one sliced three ways. Um, just a nice four percent low ABV American wheat beer base. And it's all about volume with that one. Yeah, you're just, you're just slinging those back. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah, like you're floating down the Catawba River. Yeah. And you, you know. Love so it. when Drink. you say shandy, is it straight up lemonade mixed with it? Or? No. So we, you know, for a lack of better words, kind of bastardize. I guess that. Uh, it's fine. It's not always know, bad. Yeah. yeah. Actually, something. Most of the time it's good. I think I was gonna say I think we make it better, but yeah. you know, so we're actually adding like real fruit yeah. juice and puree. For sure. Mm. This one we did lime, lemon, and tangerine. Ooh, but we've yeah. done I taste that. Yeah. So we've done a blood orange one before we did a lemon, lime, and peach one before this one. Mm. That one was really good. Okay. Um, but you know, it it's it's really, you know, just a an American a fruit and American wheat, you know. Um but super crushable. Sure. It's, you know, very easy to drink at the pool or, like I said, floating down the river. Definitely. Um, yeah. And really this, good for these summer days. This last one is very sour. I mean, I took a yeah. sip of it. So what? Wh- okay. What is this? <laughs> I, I didn't even know it was that sour. So this is our rules of acquisition. Yourself. Yeah. So this is rules of acquisition. This it's is our so sour good. IPA. Mm. I love it. That's the one I oh I had earlier. Yeah, I yeah. love that one. That's what we were talking about this earlier. Is our sour yeah. IPA. Yeah. Like I very said, that's my favorite one. That beer. I'm 
And I, I like I like to be the guy that tries like the different beers at all the breweries we've done shows at. Exactly. Yeah. And this is the, the it's got to be one of the most unique things I've had, and it's so freaking good. Yeah, it's and that, so, so good. to echo that, that's what I'm saying. Like it's not unique. about like you have to hit a certain quality level, but once you introduce an idea that is unique, you, you break a tier. Like we've had over 150 beers. That one stands out to me. Yeah, yeah. it does. That yeah. one stands out. Hundred percent. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uniqueness. Yeah, and uh, you know, I what I really like about it, you know, and kind of hitting on it before is that, you know, you might be an IPA fan, you might be a sour fan, but it should appeal to both. Yeah. To be honest with you, I you know? think it does. It's a fifty-fifty yeah. beer where you can say, it's, yeah, it's it's like if you want it to be IPA, it's IPA in your in your mind. If you want it to be a sour, it's sour in your mind. Yeah, exactly. So it's how you think of it, right? Yeah. And, you know, we're using hops, you know, like we're using Azaka, we're using Idaho 7, we're using some of those juicy hops in this beer that kind of help lend to the tartness, that, you know, dryness um, uh, of the base beer itself. Um, but, yeah, you know, we, you know, kettle sour base and then just kind of hop the shit out of it. So <laughs> <laughs> I love so that. Good. Well, Kyle, before we let you get out of here, I mean, this conversation has been Pretty fun, Fantastic. honestly. Really, yeah, like, I've, I've, I've really, oh, yeah. I'm really digging this. Um, we a- we ask all our friend, all our friends, all our guests. We're friends. This, this question. We're we are friends. friends. We're friends. The Panthers. Yes. What's more realistic, twelve and five? Oh uh, yeah. Or five and twelve? The ultimate reverse question. See, I heard this earlier on my earlier shows, and I was like, I wonder why they don't. Why, I wonder why they say five and twelve or twelve and five, and not like you know, seven and nine or seven and ten or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But I, that's that's too close. It, it is know? too close, and I think the Panthers are around that mark, either the seven and ten or ten and seven. Sure. Right. But for the sake of this, uh, for the sake of this exercise, <laughs> <sighs> I feel like I'm in gym class. I know. I'm gonna go twelve and five. Ooh. I'm gonna go twelve and five. Wow. I, Second, I second think guess that the first wow. game I sets hope. the I tone. It does. It and is a good tone setter game. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, you're right. You have the oh personal gosh, personal shit with Baker and Cleveland. I, that's a great way to. I start also have not gone through the entire schedule just yet and said win or loss. So <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it depends on how favorably you see the Panthers, right? You could. Right. Um, that's we're I gonna learn a lot. Five and twelve or twelve and five could really. I mean, it's kind of fair. The first yeah. game yeah. will tell. I would say I, if we lose to the Browns and they're one of the the worst teams in the league. Yeah. You know, sets a tone. I mean, yeah, they yeah. don't have a quarterback, right? They're the one of the worst. If you don't have a quarterback, you're one of the, you're in the bottom tier. And if we lose right off to that, it it does it sets a nasty taste yeah, in your mouth. It does. And they I re- think so. And they really don't have a quarterback. I mean, Jacoby yeah, Brissett threw like Jacobi. three interceptions in the preseason. He, yeah. he, went, back up. he went crazy. All right, so, <laughs> oh my so raise a hands in the camera. If, are the Panthers going to win Week One? Raise your hand if they win the Browns. It's in Carolina. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got four hands. I will say, Dan is picking Dan the Browns. Dan is picking the Browns. Halfway down the there's middle, gonna Dan. Be, there's going to be. He's, I'm telling Chubb, you, man. Chubb I've will seen this be an before. issue. He's going to have too much. There's going to be too much emotion there. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I think it's definitely going to affect him. But I am on the complete opposite spectrum. That is not going to shape the season of the Panthers. It's mm-hmm. one game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's kind of my thoughts on the whole situation there. But <laughs> Kyle, yes. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, guys. Thank you Thank very you. much for, you know, welcoming us into the brewery. Uh, you know, the flights were fantastic. The beers were great. Absolutely. Ambiance is outstanding. Um, hoping we can finish a couple of these pictures back there. I was going to say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's been a pleasure having you on. And, you know, we're going to get done to a little bit of business here. Um, about 15, 20 minutes. Probably about 15, Shoot our shit, so. you know. Do yeah. it. Shoot Drink some shit. more beers. Yeah. Well, yes, beers sir. were fire, bro. I mean, I can't speak highly enough. They were. Phenomenal. This podcast is fire, guys. I, I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you very wow. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you guys you. at least have made one new fan, yeah. new yeah. one hey. new follower. So thank appreciate you. it. Hell yeah. yeah. Very much appreciate it. Hey, P1 and, listener here, guys. <laughs> and uh, I'll speak to you and to the audience. Follow us on our social medias. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts. Today. Sure. Yeah, Kyle. Appreciate you having you on, man. You're a great guest. Uh, not gonna lie, I felt like that was a very, very fun, fun yeah, part there. That was so a hell of a time. Awesome. Good shit, man. Thanks, Ky- guys. Kyle, thank you, you helped me you. figure out that my friends are psychopaths. So <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> Over grilled cheese. We already grilled cheese waffle yeah, yeah. <laughs> iron. <laughs> All right, boys. All right. Well, what, do we, again, what do we got big, on the agenda? Big thank you to Kyle there for hopping on. Very much enjoyed the conversation. The beer was great. Um, Delicious. But it, you know, it might be time to hop into a little football. 
Because yeah. you want to know what's great, guys? Not Nick. only do we have college football starting Saturday, the NFL is a week from tomorrow. And you know what that means, so Dan? So just... You know what that means, right? <laughs> I, I don't. Da- Daniel is a doofus. Daniel is a doofus is coming back. Yeah. Uh, so, and Daniel, for you listeners, I, Daniel, I you hope you give guys a little are plug excited. There? Daniel, tell the audience what Daniel is a doofus is. Well, it's me being a doofus. That's first off, and then and uh, me making some some dumb bets that usually actually end up winning. So uh, follow follow the bets. Follow me on Daniel's a doofus. Yeah, that's that's great. We're gonna do a segment each week. Daniel gives a bet. You have to decide if he's a doofus. You're gonna follow it. If you follow it, you probably will win money. But I'm not a gambling expert. We don't give financial advice. So we don't. Yeah. Do what you want to do? I'm a financial <laughs> advisor, but we don't give financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love that. So we got about 15 minutes here, Max. We're gonna go through the AFC and NFC finals. We're gonna pick our Super Bowl winners, and of course, we're gonna have to get you with the sauce bracket. Oh, so, we love our sauce. So well, keep that SB. in mind, boys, as we run through this shit. Uh, we are kind of short on time, so we let's are short. get crack a lack and crack dead. Off. Yep. Okay, get us going. So my two final NFC uh, NFC teams. So the NFC Championship game is going to be played in Minnesota. Uh-huh. Whoa! The Minnesota Vikings no. are going to host the Los Angeles Rams. Wow! You said it. You said that. I. I and who I, wins? I have the Rams winning. Oh, I, I think on a the back Rams, to back Super Bowl win, back to back Super Bowl. But Bowls for they the will not win the Super Bowl. Oof. Wait, you just—I thought you just said you had the Rams winning. No, so, I, 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 I have the Rams NFC. beating NFC. the NFC champ, winning oh, the gotcha, NFC championship gotcha, game, not, going to the Super Bowl. But the Rams are not going to win the Super Bowl. So for me, okay, and Dan, don't come yourself over here. This is just because the weakness of the NFC. I got the Eagles versus Tampa Bay. I think for the Rams, it's very hard to come back and go to the Super Bowl. Just ask Tampa Bay, okay, last year. They had a great team, but they didn't go back because they won it the year before. It's hard to find that motivation when You're most right. of your team won the Super Bowl the previous year, right? Yeah. So I got Tampa Bay coming back, Brady, sure. versus the Eagles because of the easiness of the NFC. Um, and I got Tampa Bay beating the Eagles in a close game. Can I, can I just d- briefly, I, and yeah. I'm not going I'm ver- to be long-winded here, the only thing I worry about with the Bucks is it seems like Tom Brady's got something something going on. And I don't know if it's like is mentally or physically, but that man right now looks like Gary Busey. Have you yeah. seen it? It is not I a good I saw look. that. Well, I, I don't know what that. that means, Gary Busey, but well, I, I really no, don't uh, either. Oh, but if I you've get, seen Gary Busey. Listen, listen. You know All I have to say is probably it's something to do with <laughs> facial structure. Yeah. It has actually 100% to do that on the hair. It looks crazy. <laughs> yeah, what has saw that Tom big? Brady gone through? He looks he a little skeleton well, Tom Brady's been a little too much in the media for his liking. Talk about distractions. You want to talk about the Bruce Arians fire? You want to talk about the A.B. shit? You want to talk Just about his saying. vacation? There's want, a lot going on. You want to no. talk about his coming back no. from retirement? He loves TB to be tw- in the media. The TB12 yeah. method is a little, there's not enough protein in that method. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he looks a shell of himself. Oh, God. And the hair started looking staticky. I don't know what it is, but it looks like he got For electrocuted. It looks he looks crazy. Florian, you, got, you yeah. got to go. What's your NFC NFC team? Sorry. Okay. You're it's going to be a rematch of last year. Box Rams. Box Rams. I, I don't see and It's a weaker NFC. I don't see anyone in the NFC North. Um, I don't see anyone in the NFC South. I'm sorry, Dano. Um, Who wins that game? What? Um, it's going to be Rams again. Wow. Yeah, okay. I'm picking the Rams. Okay. Daniel. I got Rams, Eagles. Oh, Another Rams Eagles. I'm the only Rams? R- the Rams fan. I'm the Eagles. only one that didn't pick the Rams. Uh, that, that funny? Yeah, that's good. I respect that uh, honestly. But yeah. who do you have winning? I have the Rams winning on that game. Ooh. Yeah. All right. I'm so let's go. Bowl. Let's go AFC. Okay. Uh, Daniel, we're gonna throw it back to you. We're gonna go in reverse order here. I got Bengals Bills. Okay. Oh. And who do I have winning? The Bills this year. Okay. Wow. And only the the reason why I would say Bengals, but that. That new rule change, and like we've discussed this before, I have a <laughs> feeling, I have a feeling that this rule change, it's going to come back and it's going to end up just, for some reason, that, that rule change is going to have a factor in the, in the game. Like karma. It fucked the Bills. Now it's going to help the Bills. Yep. yep. Okay. That's fair. I don't know Dan. why. 
What about uh, you? AFC playoff team. AFC final two. Final two. Ravens and the Chargers. Oof. And That's it's going to be ball. the Love Ravens that. going to the, the Super, Super Bowl, Bowl, playing the Rams, and the Ravens are going to win the Super Bowl this year. Wow. If the you Ravens win way. the Super Bowl, Dan. I'll give you $100. Lamar Jackson is the richest person in the NFL. If that happens. If that happens, he will be the richest person in the NFL. I hope so. Okay. And then uh, so for my AFC, AFC teams, I'm going Chiefs, Broncos. And Ooh. I think the Broncos oh. will win that game. I'm so like. I have a Broncos, Tampa Bay. I can, okay. I can Super Bowl. See, I don't see the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. I can see them going, obviously, to the uh, – I don't know. I just you think that the Bengals and Bills, that is a great, that's a great. Uh, so, Florian, go for your AFC teams and then go. <laughs> AFC um, I have uh, Kansas City and Bills, uh, AFC Championship. Last year was the divisional Ooh. round. This year it's AFC Championship. The best I game. have the Bills going to the Super Bowl, and I have the Bills winning the Super Bowl. And that pains me wow. because fuck the Bills. I'm a Dolphins fan. Yeah. And unfortunately, it seems that whoever comes out of our division wins the Super Bowl, and it's never us. And that's what it is. But so Florian's won't. got the uh, Bills winning the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So Daniel, based off your final two, who do you have winning the Super Bowl? I thought I said this. Um, oh, between the uh, the final Super Bowl, right? You said sure. the Rams and the. Yeah, I said Bengals. the Rams, and I said rematch. Yes, I said the Rams, and I said the I said the Bills were going to win, right? Okay. It's so the Rams versus Bills. Yep. Um, I think the Rams win. Okay. They Repeat. have an overall better team, and that's why it's. I would love those Bills to win. I don't see it happening. Okay. So I choose the Rams. All right, Dan. I I, I told you I got the um, the Ravens and the Rams in the Super Bowl, and the Ravens are going to yeah, win. Yeah, Ravens are winning. That's what Dan said. I, I'm going to go Broncos. I think for the third straight year, you stick a veteran quarterback yeah. on a team that has a lot of talent to win the Super Bowl. Sure, I it's just want to tell you, that is a great fucking argument because I thought it about is. that too. Tampa Bay did it with Brady. Um, Rams no. did it with Stafford. Broncos are now going to do it with Wilson. Okay. So. If, if that happens – what that really that makes Russell Wilson like yeah Hall go, of Fame yeah go Easy. up for go sure. up in the Easy. levels for sure definitely for sure. huge definitely. huge because okay. so he's, he's up there already I mean yeah. just talking he's in the maybe in the discussion but I, I want to transition though uh, you know we, we have a limited time here and we've been doing our sauce bracket every week you know very very excited for it so this week we have our seven and our, our ten, ten seeds. seeds and folks we're getting down to the end so be on the lookout for that bracket and then we're going to look at you guys we're going to put out a the poll best sauce in the you. world yeah, yeah to pick out the best sauce in the world 64 we'll sauces. be we'll be taking pictures of the bracket every week Yes, we're going to do a fan vote today. You follow us on our stories for Instagram. You just pick pick which one, and we'll get this bracket cracking. So, Do you guys want to start with 11 seeds? Yeah, ten let's seeds. hit it. Yeah, 7 and 10. <laughs> 7 and 10. The, 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 <laughs> Thank the, you, Florian. The numbers fuck me up. So let's, let's start with them. Florian, it looks like you have something to say. I do. It's not your traditional sauce. It has sauce in the name. Really? I would qualify it as the sauce, but... I would say probably 90% of people wouldn't call it that as a sauce. Is this fish sauce? Nope. It's applesauce. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I'm, I that's don't actually know. a good one. Should we consider that a sauce? It has I mean, sauce it in literally the name. has it in the name. Okay. So. I'm going to say yes then. Cause and if you put it on okay. pancakes or I don't know what else, you just eat it straight up, it's sauce, applesauce. I, it's fucking good. It's, a, it's worthy of a 10 sauce. I like right. homemade applesauce. Yeah. Fire. So good. Okay. So good. Daniel? I'm going to go with my 10 seed. I'm going to go Zach Sauce. Yeah. Ooh. From Zaxby's, yeah. Don't really like it that much, to be totally honest. That's why it's my number 10. <laughs> so um, Daniel was just grasping at straws for <laughs> <those> sauces <laughs> and said, well, this will work for a 10 seed. Hey, but, I, yeah, I'm we have, we've been going through a lot of sauces, we boys. Have. You're right. Have. I'm <laughs> naming sauces I don't necessarily like anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. I'm not. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I Grasping for straws is an understatement. I, we, we've talked about sauces that didn't know existed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for my 10 seed, I'm going to go the 
pizza parmesan garlic sauce, like the garlic that's butter so you get specific. from Papa John's. Yeah, Ooh, that's that, the but Papa it, John's yeah, garlic that's sauce. Good. I mean, when you write it down, you have to put it like that so people understand. The Papa John's garlic exactly. dipping yeah. sauce. Butter. And guys, you're going to have to excuse me. i got to do some business. Yeah. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, for me, for my 10th seed, it's not, you know, everybody loves pasta. I'm going to go white wine sauce white? in a pasta. Wine no, sauce. No, I don't know if I've had that before. That, you would, I've trust had me, it. a lot of people have had it. You'll see it whenever you go order pasta. It'll say, you know, uh, rigatoni with uh, prosciutto rigatoni. and ham in a white wine sauce. So that's what I'm going to go for 10. I actually like that quite a bit in pasta. We're going to transition to our seventh seed. Florian, I'm going to throw it back to you for our seventh seed. Yep. What are you looking yeah. at? And you're a psychopath. So, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, You're looking like a psychopath. I, I, I looked through our list. I can't believe it hasn't been mentioned yet. Okay. Um, again, I don't think it has. Hoisin sauce. What's hoisin sauce? Hoisin sauce? Hoisin? Have we not said hoisin? Yeah, we have not said hoisin sauce. That is honest. I'm astounded it's crazy, right? by that. I'm shocked no one else has had it. Um, hoisin sauce is, I don't even know what the fuck it tastes like. It just tastes delicious. Um, I put it on my, when I go to a Vietnamese spa and I get pho, pho noodles, I load my bowl up in hoisin sauce. Cold pho. Uh, no, hot pho. Cold pho, pho, pho is even better with that. I haven't had that. Okay. Drew, um, I Drew. said my seventh seed, hoisin sauce. Drew, hoisin, and just, very just nice. to recap, my ten seed, white wine sauce. Think about pasta. You have prosciutto, you have... You know, you see it and it says, in a white wine sauce. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. No, for my seventh seed, I'm going to go with like a Thai peanut sauce. You know, you dip your spring rolls in it. It's very good. Good chicken in there. You know, just a nice thick peanut sauce. Yeah, Yeah. you get those summer rolls, you know, a little rice paper with shrimp and whatever else. Okay. Thai, Vietnamese. I like that. I love in there. I like that quite a bit. (laughs) Daniel? Because I forgot mine. I had to look it up real quick. My seventh is Bernays. Yeah, that's mm. actually Bernays. good. I'm surprised nice nobody steak. said that. Yeah, I know, and that is one of my favorite things. I like chimichurri. I like my Bernays on my steak, and I'm not usually a big sauce fan for uh, for steaks if they're cooked mm. properly. But chimichurri is always a go-to, and right behind it is the Bernays. So you have to have both those, chimichurri and Bernays. Get it if you haven't had yeah. it. Chine- for Chinese, for me, my seventh seed, and this is for all those Trader Joe's lovers. Incredible sauce. Oh from yeah, Trader Joe's. It's a burger sauce. It's it's a yeah. great, like I can't describe what it is. It has a smoky flavor to it. It's great not only on a burger, on a chicken sandwich, dipping. On a you fish can sandwich. literally just eat it if you want to. <laughs> it's, it's like a it's smo- so. You know what they call phenomenal. people that shop at Trader Joe's a lot? Trader Hoes. Mm, that's Dan. That's, that's but Dan. you told Dan me a couple Dan. weeks ago you Dan went shopping trader at Trader ho. Joe's for two weeks, you Trader Ho. That makes yeah, two you. Trader Ho. <laughs> um, two Trader Hoes. We'll love doing our sauce brackets. Next week we'll do eight and nine, the final two seats. Man, that's it? That's it. Yeah, and then we got it. the full bracket. And then, and that's then we're insane. Gonna, what, do you want to go negative one and one? No, I just I thought that we it was th- for 64 sauces. We went through them pretty quickly. Went through so a lot. There, not, but to be up, honest, yeah. yeah, I was starting to like. I think we I couldn't honestly, think of any. Honestly, every culture, <laughs> every vegetable, every oil, you know. Old. Old. That's some, but gentlemen, it's probably the worst time of the week on the pod. What? We got to get out of here. Oh, uh, yeah. We don't like that. It's It's been an absolute pleasure. I uh, want to thank Kyle again for hosting us in this beautiful brewery. For the if pitchers. You're in, and for the pitchers. If that's, you're that's in a the, first time thing. I it like is. that. I love having pitchers. Yeah. Um, if you're in the Charlotte area and you're over on the corner uh, of Monroe and that road over there, uh, next <laughs> yeah. to Sal's We're Pizza. not on the corner of anything. <laughs> We're on Monroe Road. <laughs> yeah. On, on Monroe Road next to Sal's Pizza, come out to Vaulted Oak. You get a warm atmosphere, wonderful people. They have Nintendo 64s around. You can play drunk video games. So, yeah, Yep, that's great stuff, guys. And if you haven't already, on Spotify, on Apple, go ahead and give us a like. Five-star rating um, goes a long way. You yeah. know, it, It's not for pride. It's because we love doing this, and uh, sure. we love giving you all the content. Hit the subscribe. Hit the like button. Hit, hit them all. Hit them all. Just, just tap crazy if on you that just, If you see anything that's like, it can make us better, you might as well just help us out, you know? Yeah. yeah. 
because we're here for you. We're here for the Charlotte community, and we want to put Charlotte on the map as the beer capital of the South. That's our goal. That's so. our goal. I completely agree. And with that, Dan. Gentlemen, folks, just want to tell you, we'll be back at home base next week. We're going to mm. take, you know, a little breather. We've been out on the road. You know, you got to just rest your dog sometimes. Mm. But <laughs> this is such a Dan saying. You have a yeah. dog. I got one dog. I got two cats. All right. Well, folks, uh, on behalf of the Flights of the Round Table and the three psychopaths sitting at the table, this has been episode 39 of the Flights of the Round Table. Hope everyone has a wonderful day, wonderful week, and we'll talk to you guys next week. Peace.